Hello dear friends, welcome back once again to yet another unit of our English literature. The Footloose in Agra, written by Ruskin Baum. What do you mean by Footloose? Footloose means free to move about. A person who is able to free to move about makes food loose. So it's about a person who travels around Agra to see the beauty of the city of Agra and its monuments. And this chapter is actually a description of the city of Agra through the eyes of an avid traveler. What do you mean by avid traveler? A traveler who is passionate about traveling, avid traveler. Nowadays we see a lot of travel vlogs, isn't it? Many people go to different places of importance and do vlogging about that particular place and its beauty. And we are very familiar with such vlogs in the YouTube and other social medias. Here, this person is uh, actually a very passionate about traveling and visiting places. And now here we have this person who is coming to take a look at the city of Agra and the monuments over there. Let's see how this lesson goes about. We will read and explain the lesson. Please follow your textbook. Okay. The cycle rickshaw is the best way of getting about Agra. Even now we can see a lot of cycle rickshaws in the city of Agra. It's an old city. Its smooth gliding motion and leisurely rate of progress are in keeping with the pace of life in this old world city. Leisurely rate of progress would mean there is no hurry. People are not in a hurry. They are quite leisurely. This is a very old city and they are not in a hurry. When we go to a city, a very crowded city, a lot of traffic etc. People are all busy. They want to reach their destination as early as possible. Maybe if they are able to reach five minutes early, they will be much more happy. They rush, they do rush driving, etc. But here in this city, you doesn't see such a rush by the people. People are quite leisurely and very smooth gliding motion he experiences and leisurely rate of progress he experiences in keeping with the pace of life in this old world city. I hope you understood the beginning part of the lesson. The rickshaw man juggles his way through the crowded bazaars, exchanging insults with Tonga drivers, pedestrians and other cyclists but once on the broad mall or thatch road, his curses change to carefree song and he free wheels along the tree lined avenues. So, this author, the person, the traveler, is traveling through the city of Agra in a rickshaw. Rickshaw is being driven by a person. While he is driving the rickshaw, he is juggling, juggling through his way, through the crowded bazaars, exchanging insults with the Tonga drivers, pedestrians and other cyclists. We can imagine the scene. But once he is on the broad mall or Taj road, his curses stops and he hums a song, carefree song. 
and he free wheels along the tree lined avenue free wheeling means when we travel in the cycle uh, when we have a free road and in a slope we don't exactly ride the cycle we do a free wheeling what do you mean by free wheeling riding pedals at rest riding pedals at rest we don't pedal we don't pedal we keep off our legs from the pedals and the cycle goes very smoothly old colonial style bungalows still stand in large compounds shaded by people banian and jaman trees so on his way he sees old bungalows and with the large compounds the compounds are full of trees what are the some what are some of the trees that the traveler sees people tree banian tree and jaman tree people tree means it's a kind of uh, fig tree banian tree we all know it's a sacred tree considered by our hindu brethren and jaman tree it's a fruit tree looking up i notice a number of bright paper kites that flutter dip and swirl in the cloudless sky now the traveler sees another sea what is the next sea he sees lot of kites flying fluttering fluttering in the wind fluttering okay this is fluttering bright paper kites that flutter dip and swirl in the cloudless sky dipping goes down like that comes up is called dipping and swirl in the cloudless sky i cannot recall seeing so many kites before i hope you have also flown kites isn't it in fact i have done it and it's a very joyful Uh, experience a flying kite is it a festival day i ask the traveler is asking the rickshaw wala is it a festival day no sahib no sir says the rickshaw man not even a holiday then why so many kites he does not even bother to look up you can see kites every day sahib for him it is a daily event for the traveler it is a wonder he is seeing so many kites he is asking is it a holiday no he says the rickshawala says no he says it's not a not even a festival it's not even a holiday it's a daily event in agra that people fly kites and the traveler tells the rickshawala that i don't see them in delhi Ah, but Delhi is a very busy place. In Agra, people still fly kites. There are kite flying competitions every Sunday, and heavy bets are sometimes placed on the outcome. As we near the city, I notice kites stuck in trees or dangling from electric wires. But there are always others soaring up to take their place. flown what happens sometimes it will get stuck on trees it may be dangling in the electric wires etc still there are so many other kites flying up in the sky i asked the rickshaw man to tell me something about the kite flyers and the kite makers but the subjects bore him rickshaw wala doesn't want to spend much time on this topic of kite flying because it's a daily event for him it is nothing very exceptional nothing new for the rickshawala you had better see the taj today sahib so the rickshawala is trying to take his attention out from the kite flying event and he says maybe it's better that you see taj today in agra taj what is taj taj mahal all right take me to it i can lunch afterwards so the traveler is telling okay take me to taj mahal 
maybe even afterwards i can take my lunch it is difficult to view the taj at noon the sun strikes the white marble and there is a great dazzle of reflected light i stand there with averted eyes looking at everything the formal gardens the surrounding walls of red sandstone the winding river everything except the monument i have come to see now oh, it's a very hot sun the afternoon and uh, you know the taj mahal is made with taj mahal is made with uh, marbles and the sun strikes on the white marble and it is dazzling and reflecting light the other is not able to see taj mahal properly but he sees the formal gardens the surrounding walls of red sandstone the winding river etc is it there of course very solid and real perfectly preserved with every jade jasper or lapis lazuli playing its part in the overall design so he sees taj mahal with all its beauty with uh, uh, semi precious stones adorning the uh, taj mahal and it's a beautiful sight he says and uh, i can shade my eyes and take in a vision of shimmering shining white marble so he sees the beauty of white marble the light rises in waves from the shimmering paving stones and the squares of black and white marble create an effect of running water those of you who have seen taj mahal will watch along with me regarding its beauty it is so beautiful for those who have not seen taj mahal i will take you to a guided tour through taj mahal please watch this video
So dear friends, I hope you have enjoyed the video going through the beauty of Taj Mahal. And now we can also see some of the beautiful things inside the chamber of Taj Mahal. It's so beautiful. Please watch the video. It's so beautiful, isn't it? The author also sees the beauty of the inner chambers of Taj Mahal and he says, inside the chamber it is cool and dark but rather musty. Musty means having a damp smell or lacking little freshness is lacking because so many people are moving about and uh, that fresh smell is not there. Freshness is missing, that's what he said. I waste no time in hurrying out into the sunlight. So, he walks about and sees the beauty, inner beauty of the chamber. He was not in a hurry to walk out to the sunlight. I walked the length of a gallery and turned with some relief to the river scene. So, there's once you come out of the Taj Mahal, there is a length of gallery and it is hot sun and uh, it is very difficult to walk through the paved marble stones during the sunny time, sunny, sunny days because it is damn hot. He says, I walked the length of a gallery and turned with some relief to the river scenes. The sluggish Yamuna winds past Agra on its way to union with the Ganga. The Yamuna river is flowing beside this Taj Mahal and going and joining with the Ganga. I know the Yamuna well. I know where it emerges from the foothills near Kalsi, cold and blue from the melting snows. I know it as it winds its way through fields of wheat melting snows. I know it as it winds its way through the fields of wheat and sugarcane and mustard across the flat plains of Uttar Pradesh, sometimes placid. Sometimes placid means sometimes it is very calm and sometimes it is floody. It floods. So the author is telling how Yamuna travels to different places. I know the river at Delhi, where its muddy banks are a patchwork of clothes spread out by the hundreds of washermen who serve the city and I know it in Mathura, where it is alive with huge turtles. Mathura, sacred city whose beginnings are lost in antiquity. Antiquity means ancient past. We don't know about its beginnings, how it began, etc. That civilization in Madura. So the author is telling us regarding the river Yamuna, how it passes through different places, Kashi, 
Uttar Pradesh, Delhi, uh, and uh, Mathura, the sacred city. And then the river winds its way to Agra, to this spot by the Taj, where parrots flash in the sunshine, kingfishers swoop low over the water, and the peacock struts across the lawns surrounding the monument. So the author sees the presence of so many birds also over there, since there is water surrounding uh, this uh, monument, great monument. He sees the parrots, he sees the kingfisher, he sees peacocks. And now he follows a peacock. I follow the peacock into a shady grove. It's quite tame and does not fly away. That uh, peacock is so used to people who come over there, the tourists. It, does, it doesn't fly away, it's quite tame. It leads me to a small boy who is sitting in the shade of a tree, feasting on a handful of small green fruit. It is leading to me, it is leading to a boy who was sitting on, a, on the shade of a tree and eating some kind of fruits. I have not seen the fruit before and I asked the boy to tell me what it is. He offers me what looks like a hard green plum. The boy offered the traveler that fruit that he was eating. It is a fruit from the Ashoka tree, says the boy. There are many such trees in the garden. Are you allowed to take the fruit? I am allowed, he says. Grinning, my father is the head gardener. He is allowed to take the fruits because his father is the head gardener. There is no problem for him to pluck the fruits and eat. I bite into the fruit. It is hard and sour but not unpleasant. The author is getting a taste of the Ashoka fruit. Do you live here? I asked. Over the world, he says. So, just so close by. He is living close by. But I come here every day to help my father and to eat the fruit. So you see the Taj Mahal every day. So the uh, traveler, the author, the traveler is uh, with wonder asking the question. So you are able to see Taj Mahal every day. I have seen it every day for as long as I can remember. So the boy says, every day I see it. On a regular basis, I see it. And there is nothing uh, very special about it right now. Because he sees it every day. Because when we go to a tourist place, we see that place as so beautiful, uh, so promising and uh, so wonderful. But maybe the people who live over there, in that place, uh, that tourist place, may not have such appreciation for the place. Because they see it every day. Similarly, this boy also says, I live here and I see Taj Mahal every day. There is nothing fascinating about Taj Mahal. And, uh, this is how he feels about Taj Mahal. And I, I am seeing it for the first time. You are very lucky. She shrugs. If you see it once or a hundred times, it is the same. It doesn't change. He shrugs. Shrugging means uh, uh, raising the shoulder in indifference. Shrugs. Uh, the boy says, shrugging, no? Shrugging, he says, okay, seeing Taj Mahal once or hundred, it doesn't matter. It's the same, he says. It doesn't change. Don't you like looking at it then? I like looking at the people who come here. They are always different. In the evening, there will be many people. The boy is interested in uh, seeing different kinds of people who are frequenting or coming to see Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal is the same for him. People are different. Every day, new new people come to visit Taj Mahal. You must have seen people from almost every country in the world. That is so. They all come here to look at Taj. The kings and queens and presidents and prime ministers and film stars and poor people too. And I look at them in that way, it isn't boring. Well, you have the Taj to thank for that. He gazes thoughtfully at the shimmering monument. So when the uh, traveler says, you have to thank Taj 
for making you see all these people, making these people come over, come over here and you can meet them, meet the new people, new faces every day. Just thank Taj for that. The traveler is telling. He gazes thoughtfully at the shimmering monument. His eyes are accustomed to sharp sunlight. He sees the Taj every day, but at this moment, he is really looking at it, thinking about it, wondering what magic it must possess to attract people from all corners of the earth, to bring them here walking through the father's well-kept garden so that he can have something new and fresh to look at each day. So the boy looks at Taj Mahal and says, what is uh, special about this monument that so many people come over here to watch this? A cloud, a very small cloud passes across the face of the sun and in the softened light I too am able to look at the Taj without screwing up my eyes. So, meanwhile a small cloud passes across the face of the sun and that time uh, the sunlight reduces and uh, the author, the traveler is able to see a glimpse of the Taj without screwing up the eyes. Screwing up my eyes means without, no, without uh, problem for the eye. Uh, with an open eye we can see the monument. As the boy said, it does not change. Therein lies its beauty. For the effects on the traveler is the same today as it was 300 years ago when Bernier wrote, nothing offends the eye. No part can be found that is not skillfully wrought or that it has no peculiar beauty. He, is, he remembers what Bernier, a writer, wrote about this Taj Mahal. Nothing offends the eye. That means every part of Taj Mahal, this monument, is giving a feast to the eyes. No part can be found that is not skillfully wrought. Every part, every little small part of this monument is skillfully made. Or that it has no peculiar beauty. Every part has got a peculiar beauty. And so, for a few moments, this poem in marble is on view to two unimportant people, the itinerant writer and the gardener's boy. For, okay, and uh, it's, uh, the lesson says, and so for a few moments, this poem in marble is on view to two unimportant people the itinerant writer and gardener's boy. So, uh, the traveler remembers the poem. B says nothing. There is really nothing to be said. But now, a few months later, when I try to recapture the essence of that day, it is not the monument that I remember most vividly. So, the traveler has gone back to his country and he sits quietly and writes an experience about travelogue, about travelogue about uh, his journey to Agra and then he says that uh, um, he is trying to recapture the essence of that day when he travelled through the city of Agra and uh, visited uh, the great monument of Taj Mahal. It is not the monument that I remember most vividly, he says. The Taj is there, of course. I still see it as a mirror for the sun. But what remains with me more than anything else is the passage of the river and the sharp flavor of the Ashoka fruit. What remembers, what is most remembered by the author is the passage of the river, Yamuna, and uh, the sharp flavor of the Ashoka fruit. So, uh, we could say that this is a kind of travelogue that the author has written. Uh, through this traveler, he makes us experience the beauty of the city of Agra and the great monument of Taj Mahal, which Shah Jahan built in love for Mumtaz. I hope you have uh, uh, quite well understood the lesson and uh, for a better understanding, here I am uh, also giving uh, a video on the lesson which you will be able to follow and also I will be giving the question answers at the end of the video which 
of course you will have to write down in your notebook and study thoroughly uh, before uh, coming to the next live session hope you have understood the lesson well the footloose in agra so see you my dear friends in the coming uh, live class till then goodbye god bless you